How's my channel? Today we're going to be talking about three key strategies that you can use to get the fastest possible Everesting time. Um, for those of you who don't know what an Everest is, it's um, a challenge where you climb a hill repeatedly till you get um, 8,848 meters of total elevation gain for that ride. The current Everesting world record time is 8 hours, 47 minutes and 37 seconds and it's held by Tobias Lestral. Yeah, you can see the route profile that uh, Tobias did on the day and uh, it's a 13% gradient climb, just over 13% and it is 1.3 kilometers in length. So from this route profile we can observe three key factors that will allow you to maximize or shall we say minimize your time for an Everest. The first and most important factor is the steepness or the gradient of the climb. You want to pick a climb that is relatively steep. I would say the ideal range is anything above 10%. Um, you don't want to go too steep because you don't want to wear out your brake pads. Uh, I know I saw this one Aussie guy who did like a 22% gradient climb, the steepest climb um, that's been Everested, and he wore out his brake pads. It was a whopping 22%. So you don't want to make it so steep and so short that you have to brake all the time and uh, your brake pads are done and you're risking your life. So I'd say anywhere between 10 and 15 percent is just perfect. The main reason why a steeper climb is better is because wind resistance becomes less and less of a factor the steeper that you go. The second key factor is to choose a climb that is as long as possible. And the reason for this is because you want to minimize the amount of time you spend turning around and braking before the turnaround. The final factor is to pick a climb that is as straight as possible. The reason for this is because you're going to have to slow down if there's a lot of corners. So if you've got a lot of winding corners, that's more braking that you have to do, more unnecessary slowing down. Whereas if you just have a straight climb, you can just descend full speed all the way and the only slowing down that you have to do is for the turnaround. So ultimately you want to combine these three factors to find the best combination of steepness, straightness and also length of the climb um, to find the ideal climb for Everesting in your area. As a nice surprise for you, I've got a bonus tip that will really help you to knock the competition out of the park. When you go on the descent, always, always descend like Peter Sagan. Otherwise, you're just missing out and you're a pussy.